Hey everybody, my name is Carl Slav, watchmaker from the Netherlands and part two of the microscope videos. A bit of a behind the scenes of our workshop uh, here at Chronoglight. And I do hope uh, it's helpful in your journey into watchmaking or just answering some questions. Cheers everybody. Much needed. Um, the microscope we use. I prefer the one on the boom, uh, but not the spring-loaded as I showed you in part one we use on the lathe. Because on the lathe you need different heights, especially with um, people working on the lathe on a different length. A workbench is more personal, so whenever I work on a watch and I have to do something else, um, the microscope always returns at exactly my eye height. Perfect, exactly what I want. Uh, this is a single boom, you have the with double boom which are a bit more stable, but whatever floats your boat, whatever flicks your switch. Um, so it's so much better, I think, than if you use, well, you can use this and work on a watch. But if anything falls off, uh, um, a screw, whatever, goes underneath, it's just clogging up your workspace. And well, for me, this is nice for inspection, but not for really production and working on it. So the one on the boom. Um, if you find a microscope, which is quite cheap, it's probably hasn't got this zoom. There we are. This is the focus and this is the zoom. And if you follow our YouTube channel Chronoglides, you see how often I zoom into a particular detail of a watch movement. You use it all the time. So uh, important. I put all the details in the description. You so you can find all the, the specifications in the description of this video. Um, so the cheaper ones don't have the zoom, but I, um, well, I think it's, it's really much needed, really important. Um, this is a trinocular, but unfortunately <laughs> the cheaper one. So the camera is using the lens for my left eye. So whenever I start the camera, um, during the live streams, I only have sight in one eye and a bit of a handicap, but uh, well, then again, um, if you got a chance, uh, buy a real trinocular that uses an extra third lens for just the camera, so you can see the depth and use both your eyes during working on watches and probably filming, streaming, or just making pictures for the client. Uh, so that's the difference between a real trinocular and this one is a binocular with an extra tube, if that makes sense. So that's it. The most important reason why I use a microscope during watchmaking, and that I bought the first one well, nine, eight, nine years ago. You cannot live without it. It's, it's hugely will improve your work, but that's probably not the most important reason. It's your posture. It's how you work on your workbench. And I'll show you on the other side. You see the difference, especially here, the deltoideus, the huge muscle on your back and lower neck. It's such a huge difference. I'll show you. The audio is not perfect over there, so uh, I'll show you first the traditional way of sitting and watchmaking. And then please have a look at the posture and the position of your back and your uh, neck muscles. It makes a huge difference. Once you uh, learn to work on a microscope, it takes some adjustments to start working on, the, on it. But after one month, 
there is absolutely no way back. Uh, see the difference in your back, uh, your spine, and the muscles here in your lower back. So, this is the traditional way, hunched over and really straining uh, the muscles over there. And that's what I love about using a microscope. Elbows are resting, your back is completely straight, and there is no strain on the neck muscles. So you work like this, and that will make a huge difference in your day-to-day -day job as a watchmaker, because it's simply not sustainable, at least for, my, for me, working like this all day, because I spend many hours and euros on, uh, on the massage because the, the, my back was killing me. Uh, that will make a huge difference if you want a career in watchmaking uh, and being it sustainable. So that's mostly why uh, the microscope. So you need the zoom, this is the focus, you need lighting. Uh, this is it doesn't fit really, but thanks to Edwin, he made it fit. Um, this is the LCD ring, uh, I believe uh, 56 lights or more, and it's adjustable. Uh, you don't even use uh, those anymore if you don't need them. Uh, you just work on here with beautiful lighting and because it's a ring around the lens uh, you don't have any shadow uh, so you got a perfect view and especially with the lights from from the top if you work like this oh, maybe you see it you work in your own shadow if you work like that <laughs> sorry like that you, you work on your own shadow like this probably visible but if you work on the ring light, you see there is no shadow, perfect view. And next bit, and that is how set up to set up uh, the microscope. Um, you don't have to strain your eyes too much. And uh, well, I am 50, uh, starting to need uh, spectacles uh, for reading, especially early in the morning. And I'm not a morning person and late in the evening um, well I am a morning person and I am not grumpy as long as everybody just shut up <laughs> and there is plenty of coffee everything will be okay hmm. but early in the morning and late in the evening um, I find it difficult to focus and especially on reading and now you are focusing with your hand and not with your eyes. Huge difference. Um, how to set up the microscope? There was a question from part one, so uh, I'll answer it in part two. <laughs> you, you put something underneath and focus on just one single detail. Very, very, very small. You focus it and you close one eye. Then you focus because usually this one has two usually there's one there is these rings you see them move up and down that is another focus so you can personalize your microscope by just focusing a course with this one then closing one eye focus perfect on one detail, use the same eye in the other and then with this one you can focus it again. Then the both of the lenses here are the same. So focus on this eye, then the next one focus that one as well. Then close the eye you just used and then 
refocus on the other eye and then you have customized your setup because there might be a difference between both your eyes so first use one eye for both of them so they are the same and the final adjustment is the other eye and then use this one instead of this one and then you customized you got a perfect view for your specific eyesight on your microscope if you find uh, that the microscope is slowly lowering uh, because of the weight of the setup um, can i show it like this not really can i show it like this yeah um, these are adjustable and that is the tension of this setup so if it's the tension is not big enough you see it's moving by itself just by the weight of the microscope if you increase the tension just by moving one side then it stays on one place and you can simply adjust it and then it'll stay on that place so that tension ring is really important um, again I put all the specifications in the description um, I read every single um, comment so please leave comments if this was useful and I really do hope so not just uh, for the result of your work but of your posture and fun as working as a, a watchmaker because it is simply not sustainable if you work like this like the hunchback it's just horrible for me it was horrible um, if this was useful information please like the video uh, um, have a look at our youtube channel chrono glide there are over 300 videos on watchmaking tools which one to buy which one definitely not to buy and some tips and tricks on uh, repairing watches uh, again i hope it was useful i uh, hope to see you soon every tuesday evening half past eight amsterdam time live watchmaking and you can join the chat ask questions and always uh, happy to, to help all of you thank you so much for your attention see you bye bye